Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Epstein. We've been conditioned to believe uh, that death is inevitable and that this is always an endpoint to our existence here on Earth in this time-space reality. So, uh, in regard to that, uh, I wanted to acquaint you with a few points that bear on my own uh, model that I call the GEMS model, Gerald Epstein Medical System, or Gerald's Educational Medical System, to provide a new spiritual educational approach uh, based in the spiritual dimension of Western uh, monotheism as the starting point for our endeavor to discover the roots of uh, illness and the uh, remedies for them, uh, which will lead us to a, uh, an ongoing existence in this time-space world. I would like to first read to you something that uh, struck me that was very important to my understanding from a very famous uh, rabbi who was a sage, uh, has been a sage in this tradition and uh, was noted to be a prodigy beginning from the age of four. His name is Rabbi Adin Steinsaltz. S-T-E-I-N-S-A-L-T-Z. And in his book called Strife of the Spirit, uh, he, uh, amongst the many uh, works that he's written, uh, this uh, essay uh, really caught my eye, which is called Death Shall Be Defeated. I won't, it's a very short uh, essay. <clears throat> it um, takes in uh, essentially three pages. And he says that, um, uh, it is the uh, it is one of the many uh, paradoxes of Jewish history that whereas the Jewish people have known premature and unnatural death as a consequence and as a constant companion, probably more than any other nation, uh, culturally and spiritually, the Jews are remarkably unpreoccupied by death and the hereafter. So he goes on to say later on uh, uh, after that as he's summing up, he says, the basic attitude of Judaism to death, which it is said was ushered in with Adam's expulsion from the Garden of Eden, is that it is not a natural, inevitable phenomenon. Death is life diseased, <coughs> distorted, uh, perverted, and diverted from the flow of holiness, which is identified with life. So side by side with a stoic submission to death, there's a stubborn battle against it on the physical and cosmic level. The world's worst defect is seen to be death, whose representative is Satan. The remedy is faith in the resurrection. Ultimately, death and evil, and the one is tantamount to the other, are dismissed as ephemeral. They are not part of the true essence of the world. And as the late Rabbi Cook, who was the, great, uh, the greatest uh, Kabbalist rabbi uh, of the 20th century in the Holy Land, emphasized in his writings, man should not accept the premise that death will always emerge the victor. In the combat of life against death, <coughs> of being against non-being, Judaism manifests disbelief in the persistence of death and maintains that it is a temporary obstacle that can and will be overcome. Our sages prophesying a world in which there'll be no more death wrote, quote, we are getting closer and closer to a world in which we shall be able to vanquish death, in which we shall be above and beyond death, end quote. So many things have arisen in my own understanding and direction <coughs> that complement what uh, Steinsaltz has written about. Two things that come to me uh, right away. He's mentioned the word holiness and that Life is, a, uh, uh, is uh, to be lived in a holy way. And I'll uh, mention something about that. First, I wanted to uh, uh, have it understood that in the physical time-space world that we live in, there is a physical principle that was heralded by Newton, Isaac Newton, many centuries ago uh, in his four, uh, four functions of the law of thermodynamics which has been a part and parcel of the principles of physics to this very time. And the second law of thermodynamics says that in the arrow of time, the endless arrow of time that moves in a direction from the past to the future, in that endless arrow accompanying it is also a, a, a spatial principle called entropy. That is the breakdown of all physical matter. 
So he equated and understood, and understood it to be that time and space, three-dimensional space and linear time are, uh, are conjoined with each other so that as, t as the never-ending arrow of time moves on in its progression, all physical objects would have to come to an end. And that includes us as human beings. That means that we are uh, b uh, born to be entropic, that is to be uh, breaking down. And as we see in our lifetimes, as you understand it for yourself, as you go from childhood or uh, say infancy to childhood, to uh, adolescence, to adulthood, to uh, uh, older age, and then eventually you come to the position of dying. So you die, and uh, so you've gone from birth to death. So as we're born in this dual, this dual world of contrast and conflict and opposition, we are doomed in that sense to be what was, is considered in a logical framework, the belief that death is inevitable. But uh, here Steinsalz is, is uh, exercising a different and saying a different perspective on it. Well, what came to my understanding and uh, about uh, and sort of uh, made a, uh, uh, an, a revelatory experience for me was an article that I had read 40 years ago called On the Creativity and Reversibility of Time by a man who was a professor of biophysics, first at Paris Medical School and also in uh, Hadassah Medical School in uh, Jerusalem, Israel. And in this essay he wrote, that uh, there is a reversibility of time, that time can be reversed. And he used physical laws and described physical laws extensively to demonstrate how time can be stopped, how it can change, the arrow of time can, can be turned around. He gave us an example, something that really was uh, 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 earth shattering for me. And uh, that example was pregnancy, birth. The actual, the actual formation of the human being, and how did it work? He said, uh, in effect, uh, we have uh, uh, two cells that join each other, and the two cells that come together, and here we see the two, the separation, come together, and they join, and the uh, egg uh, uh, leaves the uh, ovary, is grabbed by the fingers of the fallopian tube, floats down the fallopian tube into the uh, body of the uterus, lies there in the body of the uterus, flashes its eyelashes, and calls the sperm to come and join it. So the sperm come and make uh, and, and hark to the uh, call of the, of the ovary, and a sperm and an egg come together and join and become one cell. So the two become one. I might add, uh, in, the, in the connection with that, those two cells were formed by the great, the great one, the absolute one mind, the one created these two cells. These two cells then joined, became one. This one cell then uh, lay in the uh, body of the uterus and begins to replicate itself. Well, <clears throat> it's thought to be that by a current biological uh, perspective that the cells divide, one into two, two into four, four into eight, and so on, exponentially growing like that becoming an embryo, and then becoming a fetus, and then going to become what's uh, a birth product called a human being, you and me. Well, what's happened? They, uh, from our point of view, there hasn't been a division, it hasn't split, and it hasn't uh, then divided into a duality. Uh, and uh, no, what has happened is that it's multiplied. One to two to four to eight to 16, it's been a regular, almost like a Fibonacci series. And it's not dividing all the time, it's multiplying. Well, what happened in the situation? It went from this one, uh, this one cell to 60 trillion. And the 60 trillion cells are seen in its form as a human being. Well, instead of there being entropy, which is a breakdown and disorganization and decay of systems, there is its reverse. And the reverse has a term that's derived from the, uh, th that scientific term of entropy called negentropy. And I would hope one day to, to coin a term that's not from natural science to describe it called ectropy. But be that as it may, there's a negentropic function. In other words, what happened in the uterus? 
the, the organism became self-organizing. It became a self-organizing system of greater complexity and greater uniformity and, uh, and greater buildup. And instead of breaking down, it built up. Wow. So that occurred to me that what uh, is then given to us as human beings is the possible for a self-organizing universe of self to have a constant uh, possibility to build up or break down. So when we're born, we're born actually with two possible forces that are at play in us. The force of entropy, uh, as you've seen by being grabbed by the cycles of time, seasons and, uh, and hours of the clock and so on, so time grabs us. And so we're, we're caught in the arrow of time, which has built into it entropy. entropy. But on the other hand, we also saw that we have the capacity for self-organization not to be governed by the uh, relentless arrow of time and its, and its uh, accompanying uh, breakdown called entropy. So Self-organizing systems are called open systems, systems in which there's a greater buildup of energy and forces that allow us to continue in our life, uh, gov in our life extended way. And uh, so, the uh, possibilities then are entropy or negentropy. We can choose, and that was inherent in the statement in Deuteronomy, on uh, a, a statement on which my system is uh, built from, which says that uh, in Deuteronomy 30 to 34, I set before you, says the uh, Lord, I set before you life and death, good and evil, blessings and curses, and in setting before you life and death, choose. So now you can choose, and that's what struck me, and it's from that that this whole system of extended life and the possibility for eternal life has come to me. And it says, oh, you have a choice. So it's, if we plug in this other system, it's saying, in effect, I set before you entropy or ectropy, or I set before you entropy and negentropy, choose. So, so my uh, teaching and the work I've developed in this uh, new healthcare system that I've modeled, shows us all the possibilities of choosing either a path of life or a path of death. You can choose a path of, of neg entropy or choose a path of entropy. And what I have devised are a whole set of, of uh, processes, techniques, methods, resources of using your will and memory and imagination uh, as major techniques and methods to choose life rather than choosing inevitably as we are conditioned to do and faultily conditioned and miseducated to do to choose the path of death. So you can choose one or the other. So as we choose the life path in all of these different uh, uh, ways that uh, you can come to know yourself to be your own agent of healing and to become uh, the one who can become your own lifeguard and guardian of your life you can continue your life process endlessly because it's said in the Deuteronomic statement, I re choose life so that you and descend your descendants may live, meaning that there's always the life force that will pass on to your descendants so that they too will be able to continue this life process. And so everything around my work revolves uh, about how you choose and what you can do to choose the path of life the path of neg entropy. And uh, so I think this is a, 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 to me, a very significant, important contribution to make to the uh, ongoing function of our uh, being here on the earth and allow us to repurpose and change a frame of reference for our purposes for living. And uh, there's more to be said about it, uh, and which I will in future uh, videos. But I thought it was a really important point to make at this juncture. And uh, so that we can become this open system of greater complexity and self-organization constantly, day in and day out, uh, unerringly, and uh, consistently be able to build ourselves up and not be subject to the forces of entropy that, uh, that are facing us constantly in the world, having us choose this path of death and the mistakes that are inherent in the errors of living 
that are built into our existence as it's uh, as it sits now.